Here we have another exercise on root locus. This is very similar to exercise 62, except that here the pole has been moved to negative 0.4 instead of negative 1. Let's see how that affects the root locus. Again, we have a unit feedback loop, which will give us the characteristic equation as simply the multiplication of these two equations plus 1 equals to 0. We now have three poles and one zero. We have an excess of two poles. And when you have an excess of two poles, we know that we have two asymptotes going to infinity, and they go to infinity at an angle of 90 degrees and negative 90 degrees. Because again, n minus m equals to 2. We can calculate the centroid of these asymptotes. Sum of poles minus sum of zeros divided by n minus m. And this is poles we have 0, 0, negative 3.6. And poles we have negative 0 0.4 divided by 2. Here we have negative 3.6 plus 0 0.4. That's negative 3.2 divided by 2 is negative 1.2. Six. Now let's determine whether or not we have breakaway or breaking points. To calculate the breakaway or breaking points, we're going to set k to p of s and isolate for p of s in the characteristic equation. So if you replace k with p of s and solve for p of s, we have p of s equals to negative s squared times s plus 3.6 divided by s plus 0 0.4. Now we need to take the derivative of p of s with respect to s and set that to 0. The derivative here is the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom times the top divided by the bottom squared. So here you have negative and the top is s to the power of 3, so that's 3s squared plus 3.6 times s squared, that is plus 7.2s times s plus 0.4 minus the derivative of the bottom, this is simply 1 times the top s squared s plus 3.6 divided by s plus 0.4 squared, and this is equal to 0. Expanding the top of the equation, we get s to the power of 3 plus 2.4 s squared plus 1.44 s equals to 0. Of course, this all has that a negative sign, but because you have 0 on the other side, you can neglect it. Finding the roots of this third order polynomial will give s equals to 0 and s equals to negative 1.2 and s equals to negative 1.2. These numbers now, because they are real, suggest that there is a breakaway or breaking point. We don't know yet if these are breakaway or breaking points. Now we need to determine whether or not they belong to the root locus. So these are our candidate for now breakaway or breaking point. Let's write them down here at s equals to 0, s equals to negative 1.2. Break away or break in points. Now that we have all the information about our system, we can proceed with the root locus. Now let's place the poles and zeros in the S-plane. We have two poles at zero. We have one pole at negative 3.6. And we have one zero at 0 0.4, negative 0 0.4. We also know that the centroid of the asymptotes is at negative 1.6. We can draw the asymptotes here. One is going up 90 degrees. The other one is going down at a negative 90 degrees. Centroid at 1.6. Now where is the root locus? The root locus is between this pole and this zero. Because this is the only portion of the real axis with a odd number of poles and zeros. Again, if you start counting from plus infinity, here the count is 0, here the count is 2, up to negative 0 0.4, where the count becomes negative 3, up to negative 3.6, where the count is negative 4, is plus 4. 
so the only odd portion of that count is between these two elements here, which means that our breakaway or breaking point at a negative 1.2 is indeed a breakaway or breaking point. So let's write it down here. Negative 1.2 is a breakaway or breaking point, and 0 is the other breakaway or breaking point, which is located where the poles are. So now, because the root locus exists between this two pole, this pair of poles and zero, so this pole needs to go to that zero. There is no other solution. And these two poles will need to use the asymptotes. Now they have to use the asymptotes, and the additional requirement now is that they also pass through the breakaway or breaking point. Clearly, zero here is the breakaway point because the poles are leaving the real axis. And negative 1.2 needs to be at some sort of break in point. So now comes the question how can you make these two poles go to the asymptotes and pass through negative 1.2 while being symmetric with respect to the real axis? Well, the only option is that one of these poles goes up, then down, then passes through the point and uses the asymptote to go to negative infinity. If one does that, the other one needs to do the opposite. It goes down, then up, passes through the breakaway breaking point, and goes up. And this is the root locus for this particular system. You can verify these results by typing R locus of G in MATLAB, where G is this part of the function here, G equals to S plus 0.4 over s squared, s plus 3.6.